What's up YouTube? Welcome back to Trail Talk. Today we're covering what basic off-road gear off-roaders should carry for a ride. Let's go. Yes! Welcome back to Trail Talk. My name is Evan. We've got Eric behind the camera. We are here in the woods of northern Minnesota. We're at our secret playground. It's very green this time, even from episode three, yeah. Eric? Yeah, about three. Yeah. About episode three, we were around here. Um, we're not riding today. What we're talking about, I already said it, is what basic off-roading gear um, we're recommending as handy items for a ride. Uh, there's a bunch of stuff around here. None of this is necessary, right? Um, what did you admit to me, well, Eric? Some of it is. I'm, you're the kind of guy that I want to ride with because you bring all of the goods. <laughs> I will have like, the bare minimum. Eric has I'm literally gonna, nothing with have, him. Like, a coffee and a cookie. There's a spectrum here, obviously, you know, some people carry a very Spartan setup, very bare bones. We're gonna give our recommendation for a bare bones setup. Um, you could also bring the whole garage with you, which is too much. Cause look at like Eric, that's the sound of weight. So you don't need all this stuff. Ideally, like Eric was saying, hey, if we were riding, he brings coffee and the cookies. Um, but we could split some of this stuff up. So I know you're first looking at this, you're like, this is a ton of stuff. It is actually a pretty basic amount of stuff and you can always split things up. Again, not needed, figure out what you need. We're gonna talk about it all though, just simply because this is what I like to carry on a ride or at least having like a group of riders. Sound good, Eric? Sounds great. Beautiful, we're gonna get straight into it. First item on the list, it's not an item and it's gonna sound so cheesy. <laughs> it's a safety plan. <laughs> The first thing is to have a safety plan. It's not this crazy thing. It's like, hey, tell your wife, tell your best friend. I tell my fiance, like, this is where I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go from this time to this time, roughly in this area. It's good for somebody to know where on this earth you are. <laughs> um, you know, if something were to happen, if you were to get lost, if you forgot the time, at least someone is out there who's like, hey, where are they? A great thing is to have a safety plan, right? So very simple and it's totally free. Um, the second thing before we get into this whole list is to have an actual list. So for example, I wheel sometimes in my Forerunner. I wheel sometimes in other vehicles. Uh, you know, if you go camping, I just keep a list cause I'm not like, I don't have redundancy in all these different kits. Uh, to take stuff with me. So I can at least check, do I have this stuff? Do I have this safety gear, recovery gear, food and water, beef jerky, right? <laughs> On the list, have a list, have a safety plan. Those are the first two things, Eric. I like it. They're both free, they're both very simple. Actually, if you have a list, you do have to pay for a piece of paper, at least, bare minimum. Um, okay, first real thing on the list. First aid, medical gear, of all the things on this table um, that I called, you know, very handy items. I would say this is my biggest recommendation. Um, this could, you know, we're gonna open it, but this could range from simple boo-boo items. That's probably the most common. You know, someone gets a sliver, have some tweezers, someone gets, needs a Band-Aid, whatever. But let me, let's open this up, Eric. Bright red, obviously, um, very easy to find. <clears throat> Inside, there's a couple different things here. Uh, the first thing, this is like, you know, get it on Amazon, your very simple, like hiker, one to two person, like boo-boo items, maybe some gauze in here, nothing insane. Another thing, this little cute Altoid looking box thing. Uh, what do we have inside? Some Band-Aids, guess what? Pepto-Bismol. <laughs> some of this might seem crazy, but if you've been in the desert, and you've had a day where you need Pepto-Bismol or someone you love needs Pepto-Bismol, imagine saving their day and pulling out an eight pack of Pepto-Bismol. Uh, there's like some aspirin in here. Again, this is all just boo-boo stuff, right? Band-Aids, 
look at this one, uh, bite pad, right? You get a bug bite, someone has a little bump, boom. You can be the hero again. All this stuff, you're not trying to prepare for the apocalypse. You're just trying to prepare for if you're having a fun day and someone has a human thing that is like, hey, now I'm not having a fun day. You get to be the one who's like, no, we're gonna, I have this, we're gonna fix this situation. We're still gonna have fun. It's gonna be an awesome ride. Boom. Uh, Boo-boo items. I do recommend, uh, if you would like to, um, carrying a tourniquet. Obviously, all of this stuff. Eric, I am not a doctor. No. <laughs> I'm nowhere near qualified to talk about medical. Um, so do your own research. Learn how to use all of this stuff. Highly recommend if you're interested. Um, another thing, North American Rescue medical equipment. You can get a bunch of these like pre-sealed individual trauma response kit um, or an individual first aid kit. Just a small little thing, has everything you need for you. You can rip it open, keeps it all, you know, you know, away from the air, not, you know, getting worn down or whatever. All super simple stuff. It takes up almost no space whatsoever. Have medical with you. It's, it's so handy, right, Eric? The most handy. Uh, my goal in this video is to convince Eric to carry more gear for if we were <laughs> for when we go on a ride. Next item, like I said, recovery gear. We're talking about actual kind of like real cool gear at this point. Well, I actually lied uh, in the last or two videos ago. I said the number one recovery tool down here, if you can see, was a winch. Uh, the real number one recovery tool is another vehicle. So if you have another vehicle, obviously way stronger than a winch, you have a friend with you, you can use the vehicle to recover the other vehicle, you would need uh, a strap. But the number one recovery tool in all things possible is another vehicle. So I highly recommend that. Hey, you know, it's more fun too if you can go with your friends, but let's say you have just two friends, or sorry, two total people like in one vehicle, or maybe you go alone. In that case, the second recovery item I would recommend is the winch. If you're by yourself, it truly is the absolute number one recovery tool. Um, the value it brings to a recovery scenario is just unprecedented. I mean, we're gonna talk about shovels, we're gonna talk about, are you gonna shovel a vehicle out of like a <laughs> stuck scenario? Um, using a winch is so overpowered, OP as they say, um, it's the greatest recovery tool to have. So if you're riding by yourself a lot, highly recommend. Um, I also recommend, I'm not gonna really get into winches because we've talked about them a lot already. Check the future videos if you haven't seen that. Um, I recommend you learn how to use this before you're actually out in the wild and need to use it. So, you know, go out on flat ground in a very safe area in a very safe space and hook up to a tree right on flat ground, learn how to use the controls, learn how to operate it. Make sure you have some idea of what you're doing uh, before you get out into the field, as they like to say. So number one recovery tool if you're with a group, another vehicle. Number one recovery tool if you're by yourself, what is it? A winch. It's a winch, okay. The next item is a shovel. So I, this is, the, dude, this is the, actually the, one of the, <laughs> so there's a, well, there's not a story behind this. I just have some thoughts. So I used to carry like a smaller shovel that was, you know, you'll see there's almost the same size as what this was. I no longer carry that because it was just, took up too much space. This could fit anywhere, right? This is basically, if you were served in the military or are familiar, like this is very reminiscent of those shovels extends right out, boom, like that thing is pretty rigid, seen a little use. Is it metal? It's metal, right? Watch. Boom, put the fire out, right? If you're at a camp and you need to put, the, you know, throw some dirt on the fire before night, um, you can use this in a pinch. Is it the best shovel in the world? Absolutely not. There's, a, there's way better shovels, but for on the trail intermediate use, Boom, this thing is awesome and literally fits in this little bag. Next thing, the recovery bag. So you're gonna see here, right? The, the shovel was a Smitty built. We have some Smitty built items. I have some different things in here, Eric. Let me tell you about them. Okay. Firstly, if you're gonna do anything recovery oriented, gloves, you definitely wanna have gloves. If you're operating a winch, you need to have gloves on. If you're gonna be working with straps and ropes, 
if you're shoveling, have some gloves, right? Next thing, a ratchet strap. <clears throat> um, there's a, a million ways you can use a ratchet strap. They are useful in a pinch if you need to use them. Um, you can, you know, if something is loose, if there's gear loose, if you forgot a ratchet strap, if something comes loose, you can use a ratchet strap to tighten anything down. Always great to have a spare ratchet strap. Isn't this one of the things you do carry? Yes. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> this is an Eric item. <laughs> That's one of them. <clears throat> uh, next thing. This is actually, uh, I'm a big fan of these. These are soft shackles. Um, as opposed to if you've seen like a, a D-ring, right? Yeah, yeah. Those D-rings kind of of the old recovery days. These are awesome. It's kind of like having synthetic uh, winch line versus steel, same thing. Very similar material, super strong, um, weighs nothing, right? Uh, you were just zooming in and I, yeah, I went out of frame. Yeah, you're it around. <laughs> uh, have a couple of them. Um, again, they're really strong, they're awesome. Very good for different recovery scenarios. Next thing, the actual- This is like, sorry, this is like a clown car. Just more stuff. <laughs> <laughs> this is a, recovery strap, essentially. There are different kinds of these. There's toe straps, which are not very elastic. This is more like a toe strap. There are snatch straps, which have more elasticity. Um, there are kinetic ropes, which look like a massive, it almost looks like a huge version of this, but it's almost like a rubber band type thing. Um, all of these are for attaching from one vehicle to the next, possibly using in a winch scenario. I recommend, even in the bare bones setup, which we'll talk about, carrying a strap uh, because you can use it for a ton of different things. This is a little bit heavier, um, but I do recommend this if you are you know, frequently using a winch, if you're riding alone. Um, this is a very handy item, can be in those cases. This is a snatch block. Um, what this is for is, is if you were winching, let's say you were buried pretty deep, maybe to the axles or something, you're trying to winch out and the winch somehow didn't have enough power in whatever given situation. You can use this, if you see between, it's like a pulley that spins and you can have the, the winch rope run through here and it effectively, like a pulley does, doubles your pulling power. So if you have a, a rated winch that should be able to pull the vehicle and you use this, there are some very sticky situations that you can get yourself out of. Um, I have used these, they are very helpful. Definitely a handy item. Ugh, is it worth the wait? For me, it is most of the time. And remember, you can split this stuff up amongst friends. So I could carry this bag, someone could carry a different bag. Take it all into consideration. Have a snatch block if you think you need it. The next thing down here, I'm actually gonna cover, I have one more item in here, okay. but we're waiting one moment. <laughs> the next thing would be actually have a spare tire. So <clears throat> again, pros and cons always. This whole thing is pros and cons, isn't it, Eric? Yeah. Uh, a spare tire is awesome to have because if you get a flat, which you know the off-road has definitely rocks, whatever things that can certainly give you a flat. Again, if you have good tires, that also helps. But if you do get a flat, having a spare is the absolute easiest way to fix a flat tire because you don't have to worry about it. You just take it off, you put the new one on, and you're ready to go. Now, there does become you know extra weight you have to carry. There is more space you need to dedicate to a spare tire. And if you have uh, a certain machine like this one, um, there may not be that space. So I definitely recommend if you have the space, if you want the weight, use a spare tire. Uh, you could definitely get some help from it. But if you don't want to carry it, I'm making you move today. I have a dented, tire plug kit. So inside this kit, and this is part of my recommendations even for a bare bones setup, which we'll get to, everything you need to fix a flat tire. And ultimately what it comes down to is you have these things that you attach what I call bacon strips to. You seeing these, Eric? Yeah, they smell good. Don't eat them. Okay. Okay, no. there's, 
bacon strips that you can use to plug the vehicle. Inside here, there's extra tire plugs, like air valves, right? There's a ton of extra parts in here. Um, basically, you push this stuff into the vehicle, or sorry, into the tire, into the hole, and then you use a lighter, and you can use this stuff to plug a hole. Does anyone really know how to remember to use all of the gear that they have? <laughs> Air compressors, tire plug kits, all this stuff. I like to keep the instructions in here because if you do forget this, you can't Google sometimes when you have no signal. So this is the pro tip, keep the instructions. Um, I know a lot of people don't like to read the instructions, but it'll sure make you look a lot smarter if you do need them. <laughs> so tire plug kit, definitely recommend. <clears throat> okay, we're to the bottom of my clown car bag. There's nothing else in here. Eric, if you have a flat tire and you plug the tire, is the tire still flat? No, and you're not gonna blow it up with your mouth. <laughs> no, you're not. <laughs> uh, uh, air compressor, right? Air compressor is definitely going to be needed. <clears throat> I recommend you get, right, and this is just as a handy item, it's not required, but if you're going to be filling a flat, you do need something that can put air in it. Um, the, a small air compressor, like, I mean, this is the smallest one Smitty Built makes, you should, probably could certainly get smaller ones. Getting a really small air compressor is actually uh, an amazing tool to have on the trail. So. Obviously you need to put air back into the tire so it's actually filled up. So you can actually check if the hole is properly plugged. Because the tires aren't massive, I do recommend a smaller one just because it's so much lighter to carry. There's some huge air compressors you can get. You don't need that. This is maybe the biggest that I would personally go for what I do for riding. So have an air compressor with you, right? It hooks up to the battery on the vehicle down in here. You got the air hose, you got some other tools that can hook up to different things like the tires. Uh, air compressor, very awesome to have out on the trail. Okay, next thing, the jack. So some people like to carry high lift jacks. I'm not a big fan of those because they are heavy. They're like 55 pounds. Um, they're a little clunky to use. Um, this is the Pro Eagle jack. CO2 goes in here and you literally operate the jack with CO2. It'll lift a UTV, the coolest thing ever. Um, and this is super light, like not that heavy. You can actually mount these to the roll bars. They have an awesome clamp system to mount there. That is a quick release. Um, so if you carry a spare tire, you are going to need a jack. And I would definitely recommend something like this. Super easy to use. Now, this is certainly a subject that a lot of people like to talk about, belts, CVTs, and they work awesome. If you break in your vehicle properly, which we talked about in episode three, uh, and you set yourself up for the best belt life, this is much more of a just backup item to have than something you'll actually need to use. Most of the time, people will just zip tie these in different places, on roll bars as a backup thing, right? Very easy to just tuck in somewhere and totally have out of the way. Some people carry a couple um, who are a little bit harder on the vehicle sometimes, uh, but I definitely recommend carrying a backup belt. This is the easiest thing to change on a vehicle, and so that is why this is the piece of the vehicle that is designed to be the thing to need replacing. Make sense? Yeah, I'm with you. Okay, come back here also. So in here, we've talked about this before when we talked about belt braking, is where this belt actually goes inside this casing here. I would recommend, if you have a free Friday or Saturday evening, <laughs> uh, practice changing a belt, or at least practice taking off this cover, looking, seeing, learning more about the machine. A huge piece of this is, if you're gonna be riding out in the middle of you know, the forest, the desert, you don't have like a mechanic that you can just simply call. So you do have to be a little bit more prepared, which this stuff is super easy, right? It's a couple screws, you take the stuff off. Um, there's a few different things to get the belt off uh, if it was broken or something, and then put the new one on, and then you're ready to go again. Definitely practice it, I recommend, or guess what? It's all on YouTube, watch a video on YouTube, at least know what you need to do. That's my recommendation, carry a spare belt and know roughly how to use it. Now, actually on to the next thing. We are talking 
Come in for a close up. Tools. We're talking tools. Uh, stay tuned for the next video because this sucker is my, this is the biggest game changer that I have had from actually riding and bringing tools with me. It's a whole video by itself. We're going to go through it. This is an awesome toolkit to have. However, in every single vehicle that we make, you get a bag like so. And inside that bag, there is spares of different things, tons of different stuff that you might need. But more importantly, this is a nice little pouch, a toolkit with actually most all of the, the absolute most basic tools you would need to wrench on your vehicle, uh, to move some panels, to do different things. There's a pliers in here. There's a couple sockets in here. Um, definitely like a bare bones item, but it is a toolkit that comes in every single vehicle. Stay tuned for the next video where we talk about the like real deal full toolkit, but bring tools with you. You already have them just by product of getting this from the factory. If you bought a used vehicle, you may not have this in there. So, you know, double check on that. But tools, definitely a good thing to have. Are you ready for a bare bones option? Yes. There's probably a more bare bones option than even this, which Eric has displayed with coffee and cookies and a ratchet strap. Yeah. Was that your and, kit? And a belt, I have a belt. And a belt, okay. So you, okay, perfect. Um, Number one in the Spartan bare bones toolkit, or sorry, total kit is the OEM toolkit. We obviously just talked about this, so I'm not going to again, but item number one in your bare bones kit is the OEM toolkit. So you've got that. The next thing is the tire plug kit. There is definitely, we already, open this and went through it. There's definitely smaller formats of these that you can get. There's actually like little pouch ones that could even like fit in here. If you're not gonna carry a spare tire, have a way to plug the tire that might be flat. And equally with that, I know this seems like a little bit larger item, have an air compressor, have a way to fill the tire that you're plugging. Okay, so that's here. Look at how nice and neat, right? This is like a backpack. Uh, the next thing, a spare belt. We've already talked about this. This is in the bare bones kit. I do recommend this as a very handy item to have in a pinch. And last thing, there's a couple items in here, uh, but this is a very nice small way of carrying uh, a variety of some recovery gear pieces. This is like the true blue small amount of items you need. You got a ratchet strap, <laughs> Eric's best friend. Yep. You have a real towing strap, and you have soft shackles to attach said straps. Obviously a ratchet strap can ratchet by itself, but these items right here. Second jam. All of this, barely anything. This is the most bare bones that we are recommending in this particular video. Uh, basic gear to carry right along with you. All right. A few other random, this is kind of the all other random category. And once again, you're like, this is a lot of stuff here. We're about to show you how this kind of all gets packed away. Some different items to have. <clears throat> An emergency blanket. Uh, this can be used for actually a ton of things other than just like a blanket, um, but ground cover, insulation, tons of different things if you need it, weighs nothing, costs nothing, very good to have. Uh, <clears throat> Lighting, a few different things. If you want hands-free, right, and you wanna just like walk around camp, work on the vehicle at night, look down at the wheel well, a headlamp is an awesome thing to have with you. Again, these are like 19 bucks, not crazy. Um, a flashlight that you can utilize if you needed to. Uh, very good to have out on the trail. This thing is like, this is a mod light 
It's like a, la it's literally like a laser beam. I wish you were outside. This is crazy bright. Um, also, some people are gonna call these glow sticks, which just demeans them. It looks like a party. <laughs> <laughs> this is technically a chem light, which is like a little bit more industrial. Um, it is essentially a glow stick, but you can crack these obviously, and you could attach them to paracord and you could swing them around as like a signal. Um, they could just serve as a light source at night if needed. I just keep one on hand. Uh, I keep a couple on hand because they're always fun to crack if you need one. <laughs> um, but different light sources is great to have. Next thing, I recommend having comms. Um, this could come in the form of a handheld uh, radio, which I'll talk about in a second. Um, all of these things could also be hardwired into your vehicle. You know how like truckers, they like have the CB radio. Yeah. Um, you could hardwire something into your vehicle as well. Uh, there are some different communications items that you can have though. There is, uh, a ham radio that you could have. Um, you could use GMRS, GMRS. Um, you could use a CB radio. There are a ton of different types of communications. My biggest recommendation is you're probably gonna use what your, what your buddies are using or just what your riding crew uses. So if they all have CB, you're probably gonna get a CB. If they're all using ham or handheld, whatever, uh, probably what you'll use. Um, there is some things to note though. If you are using a ham radio, which this would fall under that category, you do need to have a ham operator license. Um, you take like a quiz, it's actually really long. You would probably need to study for like two to three days because uh, there's a ton of information you have to memorize, um, but you could get your ham license and use one of these. Um, GMRS and FRS, which if this, is, if this is over your head, just Google it. Basically like walkie talkies, also a great option, just not as much range. Ultimately use what your you know, compadres are riding with, whoever, whoever they are, whatever they use, use the same things they're using. A battery pack charger, or what are they, is this a charging pack? I always forget the name of these. This is basically like not needing jumper cables. This is awesome because let's say you stop, you're running your music too long with the engine off, you have your lights on too long at night, if you run the battery too low, um, if you come across someone who is stopped on the trail, their battery's dead. You can literally use this to jump them, get it started again. I definitely recommend carrying one of these because it's really peace of mind if you are needing to use a lot of power while you're out there. What do we got here? <laughs> TP. Uh, very handy <laughs> it, versus using your hands oh. versus a leaf. <laughs> yeah. Think about the people who you ride with. This is where it's like, you know, kids, uh, a significant other. Wow. What if you pulled out TP again, like the Pepto-Bismol, you can save their day. They will love you for it. Also wet wipes. If you bring your kids, you already are carrying wet wipes. <laughs> uh, otherwise I just recommend them. They're awesome for cleaning. Guess what? On some camping trips, I do what I call the wet wipe shower, Eric. Okay. <laughs> Pits, and then you go 12 inches up, 12 inches down. Wow. That's the move. <laughs> Here is the awesome reason a cell phone is great to have. If you save maps, this is a great way that you can save maps offline. Um, I use apps like the Ride Command, actually, Polaris app. So great for off-road OHV uh, trails. I use it actually for my Forerunner and for side-by-sides. Um, Gaia GPS, or sorry, Gaia the app, which uses GPS. Um, another awesome tool that you can use to save maps offline. Guess what else is on here? A compass. Uh, there's a ton of different things that you can use in your phone, not needing signal. Um, and if you do have signal, great. Now you have another communication method. Beautiful. Uh, some people do bring a backup charger for these. It's got a camera too. You can take all the fun pictures you want, take some awesome videos, post them on YouTube. It does a lot of things. It's crazy what we have. We're like a human cyborg that we have all these attached to us. Last thing we're going to show here, how do you pack all of this into the vehicle, right? <laughs> There's a couple different methods. <clears throat> um, first, Eric, before we do some magic, come on over. Obviously there's things like glove boxes, right? There's top storage. If you're running the Spartan setup, you can literally put the tool kit, the you know, plug kit all up in your dash and like just keep it out of the way and tuck a toe strap somewhere else and put the belt again right here on the crossbar. Zip tie it. 
um, equally in the back of the vehicle. Let's say you have a lock and ride box, or maybe you have a cooler in a box, maybe you have a lock box, put it all in the lock box. There's a ton of people who do that. I have a different method, which people use, which is the bag method, <laughs> okay? Two bags. Two bags? Two bags, how many bags are here? Five-ish, two bags is what I'm telling you. So firstly, I take my backpack. This is basically what I, you know, this is my everyday backpack that I just live with. Um, and so a lot of this stuff, not like all the time radios, but a lot of the stuff I just have with me. So this little tool roll thing, the flashlight goes right in here. Get that out of the way. The glow stick. <laughs> Freaking glow sticks goes right here. Uh, the flashlight can go, or the headlamp can just, you know, go in the big pocket. Um, blanket goes in there. Boom, retained. Both of these, I've never like packed in front of someone, let alone however many people. These go down in here. I don't carry TP every day. <laughs> You never know. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> Backpack. Oh, I did forget to say this actually. Um, make sure you have food and water with you. So durable snacks. The, the rule on water, if you're really gonna be out there, is one gallon per person for, per day um, if you are like literally doing a long trip. Otherwise, make sure you have a couple water bottles a person. If it's really hot, if you ride in Arizona, Southwest, really hot, have a lot of water, okay? If I'm like, you know, riding it in the woods and it's, today's a little cool, would you say, Eric? Yeah, it's cool. Um, I probably have one of these full. Bag one. Bag two. I love this thing. This is a Vertix duffel bag. Holds tons of things. Awesome to have. Let me show you what I do. So, this was a lot of the recovery gear, right? I don't have the Spartan setup, so I have this guy. Put it in, move it all the way over. On this end pocket, I take the shovel. Coolest little, this is- That is pretty cool. <laughs> little shovel goes right here. The saw I don't carry in my backpack goes right next to it. Out of the way. I take the battery charging pack and I put it down in here, and I take the med kit, so it's very easy and by itself. I mean, not totally by itself, but first thing, right? The tightest fit and the heaviest thing is the tool kit, and it just sneaks. You give it a couple extra. <laughs> that goes right there. Compressor goes right here. Belt, I, a lot of times, because again, Sometimes I'm in different vehicles. I like to keep a belt in here. This is just how I do it, right? Now everybody's gonna pack different, like for their needs, right? Yeah, basically, yeah, let me, that's a great point, Eric. One bag, two bag. And what do I do with these? This bag, if I was to ride in this vehicle, goes right here, and I seat belt it through the vehicle. It is now held in there. This one, remember those ratchet straps? This can go right here, done. Once it's, you know, strapped on, right. retained. Now, Eric made a great point. Do you need all this? Let's say I was here for the day. This is our secret playground, right? I now have a backpack full of goodies and toilet paper, <laughs> and I have an even bigger clown bag <laughs> of more things back here. This is overkill for today. I would not probably ride like this, like just by myself, you know, I'm pretty close to our facility. It wouldn't be a big deal. So the point is, if you are riding and it's a shorter ride, you probably don't need all this stuff. If you're doing a 10 day, hundreds of miles covered ride and you're camping, you probably do want more things. The point that we're trying to make is, you know how you ride and kind of what you need. You've probably had a ride where you didn't have something and you're like, I think I need the Pepto today. <laughs> uh, let your riding dictate what you need. Don't make it super complicated. Ultimately, what do we always say? Go ride, figure it out yourself. Thank you so much for watching the video. This is our little plug at the end. Hey, if you like the video, 
click the like button. If you like all the videos, hit the subscribe button. Eric and I, we have full-time jobs. You know, if you want us to keep making videos, let us know. But once again, all this stuff, it's super cool, obviously. Cool gear, cool vehicles. It's not cool though when it just sits in the garage. So please go ride and join us for the next Trail Talk video. Thank you for hanging everyone. We'll see you next week. <laughs>